From contest jerseys to military fatigues and back, Kaulana Apo's path in surfing has been far from typical. We spent a day with the South Shore resident to discuss his return to surfing and his recent finals appearance in the Vans Pipe Masters. Growing up in Neva Beach was, it was different, both good and bad. I'd say way of living is a little different for sure. You know, priorities are, are different. Where we're from, it was like, you know, your neighbor's not really making it. If you go to the beach and you see relatives that have lost themselves in drugs or alcohol. And when it was time for me to go and practice at the beach, it was like, oh, there's my auntie or there's my uncle, you know, living in a tent. Pretty sad to see, honestly. You know, whereas you go to North Shore, it's like next door's a house full of pros. Growing up, amateur surfing, it was it was huge. My family was all in. That's crazy. They they refinanced the house a few times, you know, just to get me to places around the world. And and for them to, to, to do that, right, for surfing, it's like, it's kind of, it's huge, it's huge. And I, I know how hard it was for them because they've worked so hard to get to even where we were in life, you know, and, and we didn't have much. My grandparents, that's their window right there. When I was a kid, my, my parents guys stayed there. And then they moved out, and then when I came, I stayed there with, with my grandparents. And my uncle was in the, in, the, in the side room, my cousin was in the back room. What really happened was, um, he, I, I made some bad decisions and, and developed some bad habits. And, and it, it came to the point where it wasn't just affecting me, it was affecting others around me. And, and that that transferred into my home with my parents and, and my immediate family could see it. And it, it came to a point where a family decision was made to, to do something about it. And so I was like, you know, military, that sounds good. Let's go, what do you guys think about it? Let's do it. I was stationed in Missouri and discipline and being on a routine. You know, dropping the habits that I needed to drop, those things definitely helped. It was, it was, a, it was a change of scenery, a change of environment, change of lifestyle, a change of almost everything. I had to go back to the drawing board and fix up myself and my lifestyle for a year. Let's, let's. and I realized how much home and how much surfing meant to me. I remember I had, I had no money, I had no way to get home, and I called Seth. I haven't talked to Seth in like in a super long time. He and his brother Josh did what they needed to do to get me on the next flight home. And he just told me to pack up all my stuff and come to his house. And so I, I packed up stuff for like a few days. I came over and a few days led into a few weeks and I've been here for almost two years. <laughs> I didn't touch a surfboard for one year. And first day back at Pipe, Seth had a 610 Tacoro with like, that got ran over in the driveway. I was like, oh, I probably won't go out there. You know, I didn't feel the most confident on, on that board, but we just went and he was like, you're only going straight, you know, like, screw it. If there's like a huge tire mark in it, like the board will work. And so we went out and I ended up getting a cover from that session. And it happened to be my first cover ever. And it was the first session back, first swell at Pipeline. Happened to be my first wave too. It was like pretty surreal how it all worked out. Now I know that you know making a crazy wave at pipe could change your whole life. And it has.
Getting invited to the Vans Pipe Masters was insane. I've never gotten news that big. I, I remember talking and like just like trying to talk to Kalani, Kalani David like before the heat, like just saying a little prayer for him and asking him for some waves. And when the first wave came, I was like, wow, that's, that's him for sure. You know, there's no waves that are coming in that way. It's like, it was like a perfect pipe wave behind the boil, it did everything. It like horseshoed out and it was like, well, this is insane, you know, there's gotta be another one. Here we go, Kalana Apo. Go, buddy. He's an 18.3, gets a sick ride. That day was, and still is, the win for me. Being where you're from definitely influences the route you take within your, your medium. Painting, painting now, rather than back then, it's, it's almost like, you know, I'm getting this recognition for, for being an artist and people want my art for, for exchange of money and I think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. If I can keep this up as long as I can and, and do well in surfing at the same time, I think, um, that's a level of accomplishment for me that is pretty big, I think. It's pretty huge. If you see these things, it's kind of like my little, little touch on, on lettering. <laughs> and I definitely want to just accomplish that title to identify as, as a pro surfer. On a personal level, I just want to do that, you know, because I, I, I kind of blew it a few years ago. So to to get that that title would be would be pretty cool. If I had to leave a legacy, it would be to believe in believe in yourself, believe in your environment even where you come from because against all odds you can still make it yeah you can still do it no matter what the Vance Pipe Masters this year. How was it to watch Kalana come up from like 40th place all the way to the finals? That was one of the coolest moments of the contest. Besides, I would say that and Carissa Moore's like backdoor wave yes. were like the highlights for me. The magic of that moment and Kalana to like make that happen. It was like, plus his story in the background, I was like feeling it for him. I was actually, he was my pick to win. Thanks as always for watching. To take us out, we have a segment called Last Ones in the Water. In past seasons of The Pickup, we highlighted the early birds who paddle out before first light. This year, we changed things up to find out who wins the prize at the other end of the day. All right, before we bail, do you have any last words this week? Everyone stay hydrated. It's been a long few weeks and we're on the final stretch, so good luck to everyone with their submissions. I was watching Firing Pipe all day and I needed to surf it after the contest. If the sun's down and it's like pitch black, then it's kind of different because you're like, can't really see. And then getting pounded underwater and it's dark makes it kind of scarier. There's like a scary vibe to that kind of. Like you can't really tell if the person's going and like you can't even see the bottom of the wave. So my mom's always like, come in before it's dark. It gets scary, especially when the lifeguards go in and everything. You're like, okay, I'm on my own. Like each person that goes in, okay, that's one less person that can help me if something goes wrong. It's a scary wave even in daylight. So yeah, that dark, it's probably worse. I feel like there's a lot of people still out there. So I think we're all in the same boat usually. <laughs> Everyone's just trying to find one good one to come in on, but it's kind of hard right now. It's already shameful enough. Yeah.
that you just filmed in the, in the dark crew, had this vision of getting a nighttime runner, did not happen. And it's just how it goes. <laughs> I was once out here stuck out in the dark one time and a full third reef wash through came in. And it was just me and one other person. And the other guy who was out there, I'm pretty sure had a screw loose, so. Pretty hard to say, even that last one, like, I was so like in a really safe position and it just felt so sketchy like yeah everyone's kind of at that point where they're like this is sick like we're like kind of the last couple guys yeah we're just having a good time and that's the only, only time we can go for the waves you want i think it was just me and a and an old man and he was like yeah best time now there's no one out <laughs> doesn't really matter the time of the day. I mean, we're all out there for the same reason, to get shacked. So there's one guy right now. Yeah, one older guy's out there. He says he's done this a million times. I asked him if he's all right, so we'll see, yeah. Oh, the camera. Uh, oh, I'm a 59, a tab texter from Palm Beach, Florida, pro skater. I guess I'm like the oldest guy in the QS in the entire history of mankind. I'll get in the top 10 by March, watch this happen. But I was just out last and I was the last one out. Any questions? Yeah? Pat Mulhern, 10 2. There's only two on the planet. Top secret weapons. Like, this is the Kraken Slayer. Those are the big squids that are in the trenches off Japan. I mean, I'm telling everybody my secrets. Yeah, my name's Tab, but my initial backwards bat. So I do have radar. It's just at the very end of the day, there's nobody out there, you know? So it feels like you're like the only one. You know, like if you went to the top of the mountain, you got up there, you got to the top of the peak, and you're like, Rawr! You do your Sasquatch man scream. Almost landed on me, but I got through so close. And it was really hard to get waves. You know what? I, I almost, I didn't get any, really. That was a, kind of an honor. The last guy out of the water. I just turned the lights off. Can I sing a song? Though I have to say goodbye for the summer. Darling, I'm telling you this. I'll send you all my love every day in a letter sealed with a kiss.